everyone says this is the OG. Bang Mad Bull, this is the car that literally put my name on the map for drifting. 20 is this thing because this was my time of freestyle motocross you know my love and passion for rotaries through all my teens this really is a new zealand icon for many when it comes to the rotary industries it's a poster child for so many youngsters that are now in their 20s and 30s a lot of memories for a lot of people i remember rocking up to the skid fest which back then was all v8 and then going out there and winning the skid fest. Pretty crazy to think now. Well, next year will be 20 years since I had this car, which makes me feel pretty old. Uh, I still really enjoy the process of creating a new personality or a new character, a new generation. And I never planned for this project to actually happen to this car. I just could not find an AOH station wagon. And there was one that I was gonna buy on Trade Me the guy didn't reply. So if you're the guy that's got the left hand drive, yellow 808, you didn't reply, so I ended up buying this one. But I think the feeling for me, last time being in this car, winning Skid Fest, to the next time I'm actually in this car will be <laughs> in a 19, I can't even remember what year this was, it was like 76 or 70, 76. And look at that, it's still got the rego tag because this thing was deregistered. This is so rare. Mazda RX-808. Because it was deregistered, we had it certed. So in New Zealand here, we run a cert. I used to swear and curse when I was young because I never, like to get a cert is about 500 bucks. And I never, there was no way I could get 500 bucks. So we have a warrant fitness sticker, which goes up here. So every six months we go and get a a check to make sure the car's safe, the lights work, the wheel bearings are, are, are fine. But if it's modified, you need one of these. Certifier will come check everything. You know, if you've modified the car, you've done welds, you've changed engine mounts, you know, engine conversions, then it's done properly. So you end up with one of these. But because it was deregistered, we got it certified, we were able to register it as an RX 808. So that's one of the other cool things in New Zealand. All you need to do is look at the windscreen and it tells you exactly what it is. So I don't know if this thing's going to be street legal once the time I finish with this thing. But you can see in here all the fab that Ryan's done. I've been away. I haven't even touched this thing, man. I've been away for a lot, a week. There's like a week's worth of work here at IMR. over the last two years with Link in the MX-5. So it's got an NA MX-5 subframe, IRS, so independent rear end that's been mounted into the back, which is gonna give us a whole lot of advantage when it comes to ride heights, being able to run it low and still get the, all the toes and cambers and everything that we want. The common mod for RX-3s and RX-2s, any of the old Mazdas is Hilux rear end, but uh, the Hilux rear end is just gonna Chernobyl. So we're gonna have a full-size Winters, the same as what we run, we know but this thing's not going to be that much power, it's not going to need that much power because it is going to be super lightweight. Being a wagon, there's advantages and disadvantages, but the biggest advantage is it's going to be freaking cool and a world's first. These are some crazy wheels. It's taken me a long time, you know, when it comes to old Mazda, it's 4x110. So all the old Japanese wheels, like all the SSRs, um, are usually 4x114, which is most common, all the old Nissans, all the old Toyotas. 
but now we've changed the whole subframe to MX5, which is now 4x100. So, luckily, Rotiform are on our side. We'll be able to custom make some wheels. Well hacked out, so this was the factory tunnel. Wasn't big enough because we've got an HET six speed sequential going into it. Same as what Link runs, and same as what I run in the taxi. Very strong gearbox. But I can't tell you how good the parts support is because I've never had to order any parts. So the Lamborghini, when I cut the rear quarters off, I actually made dog tags. I was able to get about 30 of them and I gave them to all the partners. Uh, and then we did a couple of really cool giveaways to the fans, to you guys. So might do the same with the 808. So you might get a chance to be able to own a piece of the uh, 808. Well, that'll be enough for it to roll over to my shop. We've got a low rider spec. People are wondering what I'm gonna do to this thing. We're putting hydros in it. And we're gonna have a low rider next. God, the thing is so light. <laughs> Andy, when it's next door. <laughs> These are both just come back from UK and Wales. Still pretty bloody tidy considering it's done the film shoot with Max Verstappen and we did Goodwood. And here's our only damage. Max is damaged, mate. For once it wasn't me breaking. Took about 76 days in transit to get it from UK back to here. Literally just landed from Australia last night at 12.30 in the morning. And then coming today, I've just been stripping this down because this PP that was in this wagon is not gonna quite cut the power that we need to turn the tires. So this is gonna get a quick little freshen up and I'm gonna jam it into the RX3 coupe for Summer Bash. Lots of motors in here as well. You know, NA20B, this is an X bad bull motor, uh, bridge ported. That was an option we looked at. This is actually factory MFR motor, so all genuine NOS parts. But this is going in Alex's personal car. We're doing an RX2 coupe that he's had for a very, very long time. A lot of the parts in this motor are actually from Katayama himself, uh, who's a huge name uh, in Mazda racing old school historics billet short crank three rotor peripheral port we've got these bad boys mad lab billet rotors we've got the billet pro side plates now these are freaking super sick so you've got a billet plate and it's actually got an insert because the other billet companies if you destroy your side plates the whole thing is a throwaway and it's a very expensive part so with the billet pro setup that is literally just an insert so you can see over here here's a 20b one so this is going to go into uh, bad bull into the rx8 for summer bash just another little job that we've got so it already comes factory ported but alex is going to do a bridge port lots of things that we've been able to test now doing motors in house but i don't know what do you guys reckon we've got the world's first five rotor i do already have a project that that was going in but maybe that goes into firsty i'm not sure so Comment below on what you guys reckon. Right now, 30mm peripheral port is not going to turn the tyres that we need that Toyo supplying. There's a lot of options right here. Is this is the actually the 900 horsepower 20B turbo setup? So it runs a Garrett G42. This is the current uh, Bad Bull setup. So Bad Bull is getting a new motor right now. There's a lot of room. Obviously, we've 3D scanned the engine bay. I don't know what do you reckon? 20B turbo. I'm thinking NA. I'm like, this thing's got to represent old school peripheral ports, like the amount of skid fest that car did as a bridge ported bloody home built thing that me and Brad had just done in the driveway with very limited tools. But I don't know, what do you what do you guys think? But for Link, it's got a championship. Um, down here at Meta Meta is the MSC, top three get Formula Drift J2 licenses to compete in Japan. So 
But for Link, it's really just uh, do some tandem stuff. The only stuff he's ever done was Summer Bash, which is, he actually bet me at his first ever event. This thing, however, has to get loaded in the next two days. But um, Haltech, all the stuff sh has just showed up there. We've got a big box um, with all the Haltech, so it'll have an R5. Um, I'm not going to let out which motor it is yet, but um, it's going to be noisy, it's going to be fast, and it's going to be fun. We're already one. in the family now. This is gonna be our drift force and drift school. Catch my drift coming shortly. So we've done it a lot overseas. So we've just scored this thing. We're gonna kind of strip it back a little bit. And then drift school. Oh, I'm gonna get carried away, right? <laughs> of course. It's my first ever S14. This is the uh, moment I think everyone's been anticipating. Does he cut it or is he leaving it factory? All right, well, it's marked. <laughs> now the fun part. It's gonna take a lot more commitment than cutting into the Lambo, that's for sure. And cutting into the Lambo was kind of easy. Well, we had no time to actually think with the Lamborghini because we literally had four weeks to build that whole car. We had our dream list. And we had our must-have list, like the priorities, which was obviously steering knuckles, the cosmetics, um, and one of them on the Lambo was doing exactly this, cutting into the factory body. This part of the, the build is a big commitment part of it, on which way you go. Do you stick with the factory guards, try fit everything under? You can see in the back, like we could have cut it out and had a narrow track and tucked all the wheels underneath, but it's the weapons, flap disc, and a one mil cutting blade. I like to use a smaller diameter because that just allows me to get a better radius. Let's go. First cut. Turning back now. Oh, I'm surprised how straight this is. Still all steel. A lot of cars this old, full of bog. Especially the amount of hands this thing's been through since I last had it. It's gone. It's off. It's gonna be a lot of mixed feelings right now of cutting this car to pieces, but I'm telling you the finished product is gonna be worth it. Always have my vision up here, you've got to commit. Whether you're on the track or just building the car, there's a lot of commitment. I'm just excited, independent rear end on a freaking rotor. Old school. A lot of advantages of running IRS. You can see the massive C notch. So it's got a crazy body drop. So this thing is going to be on the ground and you can see the swing. It's definitely going to be sick. And then we've got destroyer die knuckle. So this is the same subframe as Link Run. So destroyer die um, knuckles, which is a drop knuckle. So where that is there, this is actually going to be up another 50 mil again. So it gives us a lot of stroke motion for the shock. And that allows like where our arms are there, which is pretty much parallel where we want them. And that's about, about how much stroke travel it'll have. It's the perfect geometry. Some people, you know, if they haven't got their car low enough, they'll extend a flare down to cover the tire. With Shakatan, you do the opposite. So it's obviously full commitment. You gotta cut the body right out, but it gives the car like that real pancake slammed look. Way more aggressive, which allows us to bring our fenders out. Over fenders will probably start up around here, around this door handle sort of line and they're gonna come out because the wheel's gonna be about 200 mil wider. 
than a factory. Off his MX5. So this is a 225 45. This is what I run on my taxi. This is what Link runs on his on his car as well. Not bad. Look at that. So the wheel actually clears to the inner tub. So we don't have to do any mods to the inner tub. Obviously, we've already cut all that. Uh, made the shock mounts. The shock mounts actually off the subframe underneath. So this is all like a one-piece unit. Now the wheel, because the wheel's probably, to be fair, is gonna come out another. 10 mil thereabouts because we've still got the brake rotor to go on there um, and then I'm going to custom design my wheels that have even more dish than links. Yeah but 13s has always been my go to. 13s we can't run because of the brakes and so to give it that same like shakatan look with a 15 you, this is what you need to do and commit and cut through the body. We've actually body dropped this car by about 120 mil so the thing will be on the ground but it's going to have perfect geometry to get the best performance. I'm gonna give you an idea. If you're running 15 inch wheels on a normal rotor, so remember a factory guard is about 40 mil. Like a lowered 808, like about there is pretty slammed. Like that's literally would be rubbing. Or you'd be tucking, you'd be tucking a little right there, you'd be just tucking the lip if the offset was right. You see the ground clearance from the bottom of the sill to the tire and just how jacked that gives it a roller skate effect. And by simply, simply just cutting all the rear out, it allows you to get instantly it makes the wheel now look a lot smaller. Ground clearance right there is about 80 mil if I've worked it out right. But we've got a drop knuckle as well that goes onto that hub from destroy or die. But this is just like MX5 Fizzo, which is a very small one compared to what it's going to run on this because it's going to come up a little bit more caddy armor style, but that does give you a rough idea on. Noxious. So sick. <laughs> oh man. We're still going to run steel doors, um, front guards. That's worked out perfect. The width of the tire, the offset, so we don't have to come into this inner wall. So where our strut comes up, where the factory MX-5 one would be, is in the perfect location. Okay, now we are gonna custom make us some shocks, so I've just gotta give them that length now. So now that I've got this bellied out, I'll be able to measure the length of the sh uh, shock, and then we'll do a short one with very short stroke, so it does it ha has very minimal droop in the back. We've got the radium fuel cell, so it's a bit of a drop tank. As much as I wanna have a big tank dumped down, radium do have a bigger one which was always that old school 90s look of having a drop tank, which I could never afford. I've kept that up so you can see the winter's quick change. Drive shaft shop axles, all that stuff is really simple. I can already order that because it's identical rear end to what Link runs in his car. Same subframe, same destroyer die arm, same Woolwood brakes, uh, same drive shaft shop axles. Here's something I wanna do. I wanna measure the wheelbase because this could be so we're approximately 2300. Link's car is so short and it is very, very stable. So we've got 2250. 50 mil longer in the wheelbase than Link's car. It's always a balance. You know, when you've got the freedom to be able to obviously cut the car first, get the wheels sitting where you need to get the ride height, but then designing the wheel with rotor form with the offsets and the body kit with Miura-san, having that freedom is like, how wide do you go? I mean, right now we're sitting at about 150 mil and I want to come out a little bit more. I was thinking probably, I'd say like 180. So 180 mil wider than factory each side. As this squats, you can see how minimal movement the subframe creates with toe gain and camber gain. So, a lot of subframes, as they belly out, the arms obviously, the arms are coming up like this, so you're getting a lot of camber, so you get a lot more wear. 
uh, where this, you can see, you can see it's very minimal. It's not even moving the actual camber and it's towing in it actually as it goes down. We're at 70 mil off the ground, which is a lot compared to Mad Bull, but perfect for where we want to be. So this is Muda Sons. So black obviously being the wheel, red is the cut line, and blue is about where he visions the fender is going to be. And then that 70 mil of ground clearance, we're going to make up with a skirt. Like I said, front's easy because it's just the bolt-on fender. So, and then that gives you a bit more of an idea of like with the fenders to be a little bit up around this door handle. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone through a lot of hands. I remember at one point it was actually back on trade me for like six grand as a rolling body with everything gutted out. It was white and the wagon was literally, it looked like it was going to a graveyard for an 808 that had such nostalgic history to be on trade me at six grand. And at that point I didn't have six grand. I was just on the hustle still, you know, obviously competing um, where Mad Bull had just brought Bad Bull into the family. A crazy fleet considering we literally had to sell everything we had including Tony's show car which she had just won the King of Auto Salon and now we have now got it back in the picture. The most important piece to this puzzle, yeah this plate has been in a lot of trouble. Look how friggin beat up how many holes it's got from all the different cars but this was my plate back in the 90s but it's going back on is pretty freaking crazy to think after all these years. Ho oh, oh. ha! Arigato, toy tires. We are back in action. 20 years since my possession of this car. It took about 20 years to get me out of debt from all the trouble this thing got me in as well. Alright on the trailer. Ready to go in the box. It's going for a little trip somewhere. Got to get me the Premax, mate. <laughs> I don't know, I was reckon this van is probably the funnest of the whole fleet. Eh? Big old Chevy van, four by four swapped. It just drinks a lot of gas. I'll obviously hand it down to the motocross track up at home. There's Link's little stadium truck track that we built. Over the back side is the four wheel drive part. And then right here is Metamedic. My new love hobby is dirt carts. So they got a dirt cart track. So that season's about to start. So I got my new cart. Looking forward to getting in there. Like the a long bloody load. <laughs> Fences on the wall. The dudes are like hanging over. And there's no roof. I'm like. Yeah. Got the lowest trailer in the game with Futura trailers, and it still beaches out. It shows just how freaking low this thing is. And that's on 30. And then Toyo are going to make us a triple uh, eight R. Drop 
one thing off, thinking I'm going to have a nice empty shop. Then you got to load up the trailer. Which this is all the stuff that's just come back from UK. So we're obviously just at LZ World Tour last weekend. And Mad Bull and Rumble, the stadium truck, both arrived back. They got delivered out. And now we've got all the parts and wheels. So it's a ridiculous amount of spares, tools, and everything that have to kept, um, travel with all the cars. Been doing this for a long time, it's 16 years shipping cars around the world. Here it is the golden parcel. Now these pack outs are so bloody good. Handy in the shop, handy outside the shop. Hot pit, it's so good because everything just clips into these so lubricants. Half the stuff you forget you've got. More tools. Shit, man. See, the clip comes out. Uh... Oh, there you are. I've missed you. We've got a lot of multiple tools, obviously, for all the travel. But I've only got one of those big guns. Father, get it on here, brother. All good, brother. All right. See, brother. You can never just come here, <laughs> drop a car off, and it's like, oh, you got all these pallets. <laughs> Freaking got a whole trailer, though. Car is delivered to the shipper. Where it's going? Well, we didn't actually say, did we? Where is it going? I don't know. Maybe you guys guess where it's going, but that was two and a half weeks of ownership with Thirsty, and uh, I was away for over a week of that. Been at IMR, a lot of fab work done, obviously, with everything underneath that whole independent rear end setup that we've done out of the MX5, and then now. I was just about to let it out, but you guys can... I'm going to keep you guessing for a few more weeks and see where it ends up. See you on the next one.